Sometimes, something becomes inexplicably popular and important because of its timing. Well, yeah, that's true for all things. A movie or a book come out that just happen to match the mood of the cultural zeitgeist perfectly, and they become swept into international fame and attention. Other coincidences of timing are smaller and more technical in nature. Such is the case of Rage Software's 1998 video game, Incoming. Rage Software were a British video game developer who had been producing games since the early 1990s. Most famous for their sports video games, but an increasing sideline in shooting games. This was the team who produced the famously abysmal port of Doom to the Sega Saturn. Although this isn't entirely their fault. Jim Bagley, a programmer within Rage, wrote a new custom engine based on Doom's ID Tech 1 game engine to make full use of the Saturn hardware. The team at Rare knew that the Saturn was not designed for three-dimensional games, not with the same specifications as the Nintendo 64 or the PlayStation. It had been designed to be the ultimate sprite machine by Sega. Jim wanted to use the hardware acceleration to make Doom run more smoothly, producing a prototype that ran at 60 frames per second with full screen display. John Carmack was unimpressed however and told him to restrict himself to using the Saturn CPU, ostensibly to avoid a fine texture warping, something of a pet peeve of his that could be found commonly on 32-bit consoles that he absolutely hated. Out of time, Rage took the PlayStation port of the game, and even then, it was something of a downgrade that ran terribly, with several gaming features cut out. John Carmack later admitted that he should have let the team be more experimental, but this was over a decade before the rollout of updates and patches over the internet, so what's done was done. On computers, where they could be just a bit more experimental with the hardware, 3D accelerators were just becoming commonplace in household machines. This meant that PC gamers were becoming accustomed to realistic lighting, complex terrains and early, extremely primitive by today's standards, particle effects. Rage partnered up with 3DFX for their next game, Incoming, and they coded the title around that graphics technology to push the machine as far as they could go. Many people who bought a Voodoo 2 graphics card were offered a free copy of this game, and browsing online in retro gaming forums, it's easy to find dozens upon dozens of players with fond memories of this game. My own family received a copy alongside Tomb Raider 2, Powerboat Racing, and a few other obscure titles that I can barely remember. The name came after the waves of alien spaceships that were heading towards Earth. This was just two or three years after the blockbuster hit Independence Day, and I honestly think Incoming is a far better tribute to that film than the official Independence Day video game ever was. For 1998, Incoming was beautiful. It featured aerial and ground combat between tanks, helicopters, ships, UFOs and turrets. In campaign mode, you begin rooted to the ground with a view of the skies as wave after wave of invading alien forces race towards your location. After a few waves, you take to the skies in a helicopter and you scout around the mountainous terrain surrounding the military base you started in. This cycle repeats before eventually you're plonked into a tank and asked to fend off attacking vehicles, and eventually you get access to fighter jets and UFOs. All of these vehicles control slightly differently, although similarly enough to make the transition fairly seamless. The missions are quite long. Each of the six stages has 10 phases, and besides the battle for domination, there are some side objectives such as trying to prevent damage to the facility you're protecting, or to protect convoys of allied vehicles fleeing from danger. Outside of the campaign, there's an arcade mode where the same locations can be explored more freely with single, split-screen or online network multiplayer options. For 1998, it was a revelation, and software that pushed everything on the market that had come before the 3DFX Voodoo 2 to the limit. Rage was forced to put a Q&A on their website as they were bombarded with questions about compatibility, and they received criticism from IGN and other journalists for giving out the rather lame excuse, it's your hardware to blame, it's not up to scratch, and that's not our fault. In the days before Valve, when Steam offered a degree of standardisation, compatibility testing was not the priority of many teams. They knew it worked on the Voodoo 2 hardware, and that was what mattered to their core audience. What was Cutting Edge in 1998, however, was old hat already by the end of 1999. 
With new console hardware coming onto the scene, Rage considered their options and although they did look at the Nintendo 64, ultimately they landed the title on Sega's new Dreamcast hardware. Incoming was a very early release for the platform, coming out within the first month in North America and being a launch title in Europe. But this slight delay meant that by the time it arrived, gamers who picked it up had seen 18 other comparable games of equivalent quality. And with the year old 3D engine the main selling point of the game, players were a little bit more critical of its content the second time around. It's a very arcade-like title, which made it a good fit in theory for Sega. However, it's also a very content light game. The vast open terrains are fairly dull and lifeless. There are no real variety in the enemy crafts or designs in the mission structure. That is, until after the players had completed the six initial missions, when they were sent back to revisit the previous levels with their instructions reversed. Rather than defending the installation, they are now tasked with destroying everything. It's an odd choice and fairly blatant way to extend the campaign. Largely, most of the replayability here comes from the incredibly high difficulty ceiling. Rage themselves seem to acknowledge the problem as when they developed a sequel in 2002, they sold it on the promise that the first game had been the engine, the second game would actually bring content. So within a year, Incoming had gone from a minor darling for a cult niche group of PC gaming enthusiasts to something of a mediocre, inconsequential diversion on the Dreamcast. It wasn't scorned as a broken game, it was fine. Fun in short bursts even, but nothing special. Yet, just one year earlier, for those eager fans unwrapping their Voodoo 2 graphics card enabled devices, this was everything we'd ever dreamed of. 